Pregnant women are warned about everything. Unpasteurized cheese, deli meats, too much caffeine. But they're really warned about the one thing that they actually take every day that crosses the placenta and can cause a lot of problems in newborns. And that is SSRIs. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about what happens when these drugs are suddenly stopped at birth and why so few people are talking about it. Around 10% of pregnant women in the US are prescribed SSRIs. And while the baby is growing inside mom, their brains are adapting to the presence of this serotonin drug. Now, unless the mom tapers off these medications completely before birth, when that umbilical cord is cut, that baby is plunged into withdrawal. There is no gradual reduction, no tapering, just an abrupt stop. Now, for a brain that has adapted to being on this chemical for the last nine months, this can cause all sorts of problems. Problems with their mood and arousal, temperature dysregulation, breathing problems, even feeding problems. And in case you're suspecting that, hey, maybe this is okay because if mom keeps taking the medication, it's going to be in the breast milk, the baby's going to be okay. Unfortunately, that's not the case. The amount of drug in the breast milk is substantially less than what the baby is getting when they are plugged into the mom essentially through the umbilical cord. And so even with breastfeeding, it still plunges the baby into withdrawal. Now, generally what you'll notice is that within a few hours to a few days of birth, a uh, baby can develop the following symptoms. They can develop tremors, jitteriness, irritability, high-pitched crying, sleep disturbances. Sometimes even rarely they can develop seizures. They have temperature dysregulation, sweating problems, even respiratory distress, such as rapid breathing or apnea where they stop breathing. They can struggle to latch onto mom and feed afterwards, and they can experience things like vomiting and dehydration. Another serious concern is hypoglycemia, where they develop very low levels of blood sugar. And these symptoms are all really similar to what we see with withdrawals from other medications like opiates or even benzodiazepines. Now, how common is this? Well, it's actually really hard to measure, so it's hard to get data on exactly how many babies experience this. Some researchers have put it at th around 30%, but I suspect it's higher because obviously it's hard to measure and these children can't tell you how they're feeling. One of the most unfortunate things that I see in this space is that many doctors will tell the mom that this is mild and transient. And I get it, they want to reassure the mom and minimize the concern about this you know, potentially significant problem. But that's not what the data shows because I wish it was mild and transient. And it's possible that it is for many. But when Albright and his colleagues in 2001 did a study where they looked at 4,900 full-term births at Northwestern Memorial Hospital, here is what they found. They found that the SSRI-exposed infants were more likely to require neonatal resuscitation after birth compared to those who were not exposed. The rate was 12.9% in the exposed group and 4.2% in the unexposed group. To me, that's quite a difference. On top of that, they found that there was a doubling in chance that the babies who were exposed to antidepressants got admitted to the neonatal intensive care unit. Ultimately, these authors concluded that these findings support a recommendation that third trimester SSRI exposure needs to be considered a risk for a baby needing resuscitation following birth. And one thing about this that really bothers me is that there appears to be an effort to minimize this particular side effect. It's a double standard because when moms are taking opiates or even benzodiazepines, a lot of doctors will tell them, hey, you know, baby is exposed to this, the baby is going to go into withdrawal, and this could be serious. But when it comes to antidepressants, doctors downplay it. They even use a different phrase. Instead of saying, hey, the baby is going to go into withdrawal, a lot of doctors will say they will develop poor neonatal adaptation syndrome. This is essentially saying withdrawal, but doctors often choose this kind of sanitized language when it comes to antidepressants, believing that this somehow combats stigma. Now, there's a big problem in psychiatry where if you talk about real genuine risks that are even in the labels of these medications, people will say, oh, you're stigmatizing people. You're scaring them away from drugs. There is a big difference between saying, hey, you know, you're a weak person for needing this medication, shame on you, and just saying, a spade is a spade, you know, this is what's happening. Unfortunately, doctors aren't doing this in psychiatry, and they often downplay or soft pedal some of these side effects. And using this term, neonatal adaptation syndrome, 
as if, oh, you know, the baby's just going to have a little bit of a hard time adapting. No, this is drug withdrawal and the sanitized language does not help because do you know who is surprised afterwards? The moms are surprised when their baby is born and it's having a really hard time and then they go and they search and they ask more questions and then the doctor says, well, yes, they're actually in withdrawal and, you know, there's a 12% chance that they could end up needing resuscitation. And the mom says, well, why didn't anyone tell me this while I was pregnant? Why didn't anyone tell me this when I was, uh, you know, talking to the doctor about, you know, wanting to conceive and have a pregnancy? I needed to have known earlier. So this is a big problem. And so what should we be doing differently? Well, obviously, we need to be talking to moms about the risks of their baby abruptly going into withdrawal when, when they are born. Most women want to know this before they even start to think about having a baby. And they need to because the worst time to come off a medication is when you're pregnant. There are hormonal fluctuations, which can cause mood instability. Many women are juggling jobs and looking after other children. And they're also dealing with the fatigue from the pregnancy. And so coming off a medication at this time is really high risk. Another thing that I see moms do, which I do not recommend, is to rush to come off the medication towards the end of the pregnancy to prevent withdrawal. Generally, they are going to go too fast and then they'll trigger a withdrawal syndrome in, their, in themselves and they'll become really depressed, which is obviously hugely problematic as well. The best time to come off this medication is before you even become pregnant. Now, if the information in this video troubled you, I wish this was the end of it because there's actually other issues that you need to be aware of. And those involve the changes to the brains and to the behavior of the infants who are exposed to SSRIs during neurological development when they are still in mom. And so if you want to learn more about this, be sure to watch this video next.